Again, the show brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find more information on all six of their excellent sports books over at tunicatravel.com. If you want the other NFL previews that we have done, Monday's show was the NFC East and the AFC East. Tuesday's was the AFC North and the NFC North. Wednesday's was the AFC South and the NFC South. Of course, today the AFC West. And now let's move into the NFC West. The last four that we are doing for the season, all 32 teams. The Arizona Cardinals, 3-13 and 13 last year. Steve Wilkes was a disaster hire, and it was a one-and-done situation. They, uh, they got rid of him. To win the division this year, the odds are plus 2,500, which means it's not going to happen. If it did happen, holy mackalims, could you imagine? It's not going to happen. Could you imagine the people that would be signing – like drafting guys like Kyler Murray out of college. They would be signing guys like Cliff Kingsbury. Like I, I could see Graham Harrell, USC's offensive coordinator, getting a head coaching job next year. Yeah. I mean, it would be insane. Mike Leach would become the highest paid coach in, in the NFL. Yeah. Uh, strength of schedule is number 12 in the league. Their turnover margin was number 29 last year, minus 12. Their over-under is five this year. The juice is the same on both sides, minus 110 on each. Cliff Kingsbury is the head coach, comes in after being fired from Texas Tech, which is still one of the weirdest things that I have ever seen in my life. Total yards per play, they were number 32 in the NFL last year. Dead last, averaged 4.3 yards per play. They could not come up with any kind of scheme to help out Josh Rosen whatsoever. They bring in offensive coordinator Tom Clements, who was Green Bay's offensive coordinator before Mike McCarthy got fired. They had the second most injured offense in 2018, it was the most injured in 2017. Um, they bring in quarterback Kyler Murray. He's a perfect fit for the air raid. Of course, the offense will be predicated on what he does. Sure. Right? Defense, yards per play, number eight last year. Still pretty good. Uh, but, man, when that offense is that bad, it's... Well, you're on the almost, field every time. There's nothing you could do. No. Uh, they gave up 5.4 yards per play. They bring in Vance Joseph, former Denver head coach, and he was an awesome defensive, defensive coordinator. coordinator. No, yeah. Um, so, he should be pretty good. They brought in outside linebacker Terrell Suggs, middle linebacker, uh, let's see, Jordan Hicks. Uh, cornerback Patrick Peterson, however, is suspended for the first six games, and that is going to hurt because he was his position on the field was targeted less than 10% of the time last year. Yeah. That, he's, that he's shortened been, the field yeah, completely. He's, he's been the shutdown cover corner for the NFL for the last couple of years. I mean, he's, he, he's the premium crop. Yeah. Um, they are not projected to be favored in a single game this year, and yet their over-under is at five. Uh, this looks a lot, when you just look on paper and everything else, a lot like when the 2013 Eagles brought in Chip Kelly. They brought in uh, an influx of talent. They they have really, and, and they should not be as injured this year as they were last year. They've got Larry Fitzgerald, who of course is on up there in age, but he is the legend around there. Christian Kirk should be a little bit better. Um, I mean, they just, through through the week 12 bye, they face nine teams that are projected to be bottom 10 pass defenses. So there is a chance here That's right. that they could just outscore teams. Um, in their division, with the Rams, the 49ers, and the Seahawks, those three teams saw a combined 43 plays that came out of four wide receiver sets last year, that's almost all that Cliff Kingsbury runs. I was just he, about to he say, ran nearly that's 80%. all they're going to see now. Yeah, he ran nearly 80% of that at Texas Tech. That is what they will do with Kyler Murray. Um, look, I I think that they will be improved from that 3-13. and 13. That offensive line still has problems. Uh, even if they aren't injured, that's still a problem, right? But the this, defense is going to be better because they're not going to be on the field as much, right? We know that that's well, going to happen. Do we? I mean, because yeah, remember, the offense this is, is going to be uh, this up tempo offense, right? The, so, the offense is going to be yeah, but last year I think year, the offense will be better. The last year the offense was so bad it didn't matter how slow it was. Yeah, the defense is just constantly on the field. I think they will score more points. I mean, you just I, get a couple of first downs just because you go fast doesn't mean anything. That's true. I've I've got them at four and twelve. Um. We're close, and I and I think that that's pretty good. I've got them five and eleven, and and yeah, and I, I just think we're, we're we're right there in the same realm. 
Yeah. I mean, and I, I think that would be a pretty successful first They're going to improve. They're going to go forward. You want to see that defense continue to, to, to be okay and to, I guess, improve. And then you want to see drastic changes in the offense. Yeah. Yeah, you and, and I believe that you will. I believe you will. Next up, the Los Angeles Rams, 13-3 and last year, made the Super Bowl. Maybe maybe fraudulently? We, I won't say fraudulently. I will say they got a little help. They got a lot of help. There you go. To win the division, odds are minus 175 out in Vegas. Their strength of schedule, number 25. So pretty weak strength of schedule. Turnover margin, they were number four last year, plus 11 in the league. Head coach is Sean McVay. Obviously, everybody and their mother loves this kid. Over under is 10 and a half. The juice on the over is plus 120. Now, the juice on the under, minus 140. So, Vegas is right there, like a, probably about 10. Total yards per play, they were number three last year, 6.2 yards per play on offense. McVay calls the plays on offense. They signed quarterback Blake Bortles as their backup. Uh, if he can turn something in, like if he can turn Blake Bortles into anything, that is a miracle job. They drafted running back Daryl Henderson. Of course, we all know that Todd Gurley has had problems, arthritic knees, etc. Daryl Henderson is explosive as they come. Uh, he will be a big time, uh, I won't say upgrade. I just, I have a lot of faith in this kid. If he has to take over the job because Ty Gurley can't physically do it, he's going to do just fine. I think he'll be offense. fine. Uh, defensive coordinator is Wade Phillips. Their total yards per play last year. I think this was more of, hey, we are just so much better than everybody. We don't really care. But they were number 25 in the NFL. Now, we know that the defense was better than that. But no, I think they were pretty easy to throw on. I don't know they, if the defense no, but was it, better than but that. But they were easy to throw on after the team had already gone up a lot because they, they gave up a lot of big leads. Um, and I think it was, we know that we are talented. We know that we are good. We don't really have to put forth as much effort. I think that's what happened last year. Uh, they gave up 5.9 yards per play, but we, we still trust Wade Phillips. Yeah, right. I mean, I think losing in Dominican Sue in the middle is going to hurt. I think people are going to be able to run on them a little easier than they did last year because yep. of that. And uh, I think the, the the not that they got a lot of pressure, but that's going to hurt pressure. I mean, they yeah. they still have Aaron Donald, who is still a freak. But they signed free safety Eric Weddle. They uh, signed yeah. linebacker Clay Matthews. I don't see um, either of those as big signings. And they, well, both of them are expected to start. That's well, yeah, but I don't thing. know that that's a good thing. Uh, drafted safety Taylor Rapp from Washington. Uh, they are a projected favorite in 13 games. I think they take a, a little step back this year. Um, I've got them at 10 and 6. I think this division is pretty good. I think you, you, coming off of a Super Bowl loss, of course, we all know what the trend is. I think 10 and 6 is actually pretty good here. I, I got them 10 and 6 too. And I know so some of this is going to be homerism, but some of this is going to be the way the season starts. I I think they're going to have their first touch of like real questioning who we are and, and what we do. I think they start off 0-3. 0-3? I, I think they have to start the season off going to Carolina. So that's a noon game for a West Coast team against a team that I think is really good this year. Cam's going to be healthy and ready for that team. They got New Orleans coming to them, and I will bet – Every nickel I have that New Orleans not just wins that game, but New Orleans goes to Los Angeles and whips their butt. That is that is going to be a team where if New Orleans loses, it's because their defense gets massive amounts of penalties because they're going to hurt folks. You think Bounty Gate was thing? This is going to get ugly. Yeah. Trust I, me on that. And then they go to Sunday night football in Cleveland. Now, you can call me a homer all you want. Primetime football has not been in Cleveland in over a decade. Okay, Monday night or Sunday night football, the primetime game of the week hasn't been in, in Cleveland in over 10 years. It's been 11, 12 years, something like that. I'm telling you, that place is going to be insane. You want to talk about home field advantage? They, That's going to be a game where, where things could unravel quick. Let's see. Saints, they are expected to be favored by three points in week two. Saints or the Rams? The Rams. I, that, I think the Saints are going to win outright, and I think they're going to win nasty. The Rams, Maybe not big, but nasty. The I Rams, think that game's going to be more physical than we think. The Rams are expected to be a three-point favorite at the Panthers. 
at home against the Saints and at the Browns. No, no question about it, and that's fine because West Coast teams going to East Coast teams in the morning times, it, it just is just a normal bet that you you bet the East Coast team. Yeah, and 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 that normally works out okay. And I think Carolina is a lot better than than most people. Yeah, it's, and I, I can. It's I can my understand. opinion on two of these teams, and my thought on the Saints are. They're gonna be mad. This gonna be this gonna be ugly. Yeah. They don't have to wait very long to get revenge. Week yeah. two. Week two. Moving on, the San Francisco 49ers, four and twelve last year that had a lot to do with injuries and whatnot, uh, mainly to Jimmy Garoppolo, Jimmy G. Maybe the most handsome quarterback in the league. Division championship odds plus five hundred, which is way up there. I was really surprised by this. Strength of schedule is number 19. It is the uh, second easiest schedule in the division. Turnover margin, 32nd in the league last year. Dead last, minus 25, which is crazy. Uh, head coach is Kyle Shanahan. Their over-under is 8. Uh, the juice on the over is minus 120. The juice on the under is even money, plus 100. They are a projected favorite in six games. Their total yards per play, they were number 14 in the league last year. Averaged 5.8 yards per play. Of course, Shanahan calls the plays on offense, so you would kind of expect that. They signed running back Tevin Coleman and wide receiver Jordan Matthews. They drafted wide receiver Debo Samuel and wide receiver Jalen Hurd from uh, Baylor. Uh, and we'll see what kind of player Hurd turns out to be. Uh, we both love Debo. Yes. Love Debo. First preseason game, Debo caught like a 60-yard bomb. That guy's going to be special. Yeah. Now, he, he might not be this year because it takes a year for rookies to – Kind of work out in, in wide receiver, but defensive coordinator Robert Sally, uh, signed linebacker D Ford, cornerback Jason Verrett, and linebacker Quan Alexander. They drafted defensive end Nick Bosa, uh, who I am on record as saying I don't think he's going to be that great, but we will see. Uh, obviously, he comes from a long lineage of great uh, players, great Bosas, we'll say. <laughs> great Bosas. Uh, Again, projected favorite in six games. Their over-under is eight, and I think it's dead on the number. I think this is an eight and eight team. Uh, I like Jimmy G. I like Kyle Shanahan. I think this will be a massive improvement over their 4-12 and 12 campaign last season. Uh, but eight and eight seems about right to me. Uh, just li- I understand that the schedule projection says 19th, um, but I think it's a pretty difficult schedule. But I think, oh, they, yeah. I think they win some games that maybe they're not supposed to. And... We're right there. I love this team. I I like Kyle Shanahan a lot. I really like Jimmy G. I think he's got a lot of potential. I got him seven and nine. And I I think the schedule's not super easy. And uh I think I think having Tevin Coleman opens up a whole new world for this offense. What what Coleman was able to do under Shanahan in Atlanta was crazy. That's right. Um and of course they get uh, the other running back back whose name escapes me. Well Matt Breda is gonna be there. Um Jarrett McKinnon was McKinnon, the big signing the last year, but he's hurt now. And before he got hurt, he didn't hasn't looked great in camp coming off his injury from last year. Uh, but but Matt Brea is is pretty good too. Yeah, I, they're gonna have three dudes back there, and they'll be just fine at running back. If you know a Kyle Shanahan offense, they're gonna put up points, and they're yeah. gonna they're gonna be good. Um, Dennis Pitta gonna be a stable, and 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 I mean they're, they're just they got weapons. Yeah, they really. Kyle do. Shanahan's going to figure the offense out. I do think, even though with Nick Bosa, the defense is, they got to figure some things out. Yes. All right. Moving on. Last team. This is the last NFL preview. Of course, if you want to go back uh, Monday through Thursday this week, we've done previews. Tomorrow on the show on Friday, we will give our Super Bowl picks, playoff picks, and our favorite over under bets for the NFL regular season win totals. The Seattle Seahawks. 10 and 6 last year. To win the division, their odds are plus 275. So, second best odds. Strength of schedule, number 14 in the league. Their turnover margin last year was number one. They were plus 15. Head coach, Pete Carroll. Their offense, total yards per play, number 15 in the league, right? Right dead middle. 5.6 yards per play average. They signed guard Mike Ayupati. They drafted wide receiver DK Metcalf. Uh, on defense, Number 26, uh, as far as yards per play, they gave up 5.9. Defense coordinator is Ken Norton. They signed defensive end Ezekiel, uh, good gracious, Ancho. 
I can't even read my writing. I was I was doing this at twelve thirty last night. Uh, they drafted defensive end L.J. Collier from TCU, and that kind of surprised everybody. They are a projected favorite in seven games. Look, the over under I understand eight and a half. The juice is minus one forty on the over, plus one twenty on the under. Everybody loves Russell Wilson. Everybody loves Pete Carroll. Uh, they won ten games last year. I've got them at eight and eight this year. I think it was a little bit of smoke and mirrors last year. Turnover margin, it, there is always a regression to the means. They had the number one most turnover luck in the NFL last year. I don't trust Brian Schottenheimer. Um, they just did not put their team in uh, Ansa, Ezekiel Ansa. There you go. Um, I don't... I like Pete Carroll. I like Russell Wilson. I think that the play calling and whatnot suffered majorly last year. Eight and eight sounds about right to me. Seven, nine, and seven. I mean, we're, we're close. Okay. I, I think they'll be a little above average. That is giving Russell Wilson a bump. That is giving Pete Carroll a little bump and just saying, I trust those guys. Yeah. Um, in the realm of the 49ers being seven and nine and them nine and seven, it is a... I like Kyle Shanahan and I like Jimmy G, but I gotta I gotta see it. Yeah. And with Russell and Pete, I have seen it. Yeah. And and that's that's where I get that just little bit of separation. If those two flip flopped, I wouldn't be shocked. Wouldn't be totally surprised. I, I guess I would having Pete Carroll have a losing record would would surprise me. But you know that offense, I mean, it, it could be bad. It could go south. That offensive line's not great. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we'll have to see. I mean that. Last year, I didn't think they were going to be very good at all because the offensive line was bad. I didn't think they could run the ball whatsoever. I thought Russell Wilson get outside of the pocket and throw it. I was wrong. They ran it. They ran it successfully. They ran it well, um, and they didn't throw it that well. And <clears throat> which, which is what makes it even more crazy that like it, they didn't really focus on throwing the ball a lot. I mean, their their passing offense was kind of you know middle of the yeah. road. And they just gave him the most expensive quarterback contract in the history of the NFL. Yeah, but right? he makes that run just because he didn't throw a lot. He ran a lot of those runs. Yeah, yeah no, he I did. I mean, he's he is the guy that you gotta pay on that team. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't afford not to. They don't sign. have a, a a a big offensive player that you're saving that money for. No, and I mean nobody's think, giving Chris Carson or Rashard Penny like a Zeke deal. Okay, I, I do <laughs> think um, who did they Doug, they lost Doug Baldwin. Now they've still got yeah, Tyler he retired, Lockett. but he didn't play much last year anyway. I mean, he yeah. was hurt almost the entire season. Um, but I think he was a good locker room guy. Like, I oh think, no, I think, I think that dude was a leader on that team. Yeah, and I think that that means something. I don't True. know what it means. I don't know exactly, but you know, I've got him eight and eight. I, uh, you got him nine and seven. Yeah, I will tell you the the pictures of Metcalf and Lockett like working out next to each other hilarious. are really really funny because yeah. one guy is a monster and the other guy is like a little dude. Yeah. But the little dude, I think, is going to have some major league yards. Oh, I, I think little dude's going to have a big season, fantasy-wise. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm big on Lockett this year. All right, that's going to wrap up our NFC West and AFC West previews. Of course, you can go download the other ones. Uh, Monday through Thursday this week, we have done all, all 32. All eight divisions. We're done. So go check them out for yourself. Of course, tomorrow's show, we will have our over-under picks uh, for Vegas betting odds on the regular season win totals, uh, our five favorites. Of course, and we'll have our Super Bowl picks and playoff picks. Uh, you can find more information about us over at winningcureseverything.com. Make sure you visit tunicatravel.com for our presenting sponsor. We appreciate you guys being here. Leave some comments for us. Hit that subscribe button. Leave some nice reviews on the podcast. And we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.